uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans, abyss earthlings, if you are, where, if you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to Channel and Bushgrin. Two things we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to set up your sensitivity perfectly. Uh, I'm going to give you the guide to how to do that, like actually show you exercises you can do to figure that out. And then I'm going to show you some drills you can do to become really good at aiming and actually improve your gameplay. Let's get straight to it. First thing we're going to do is look at the camera weapons. Camera is when you're moving around the screen and looking at stuff. This is third person, no scope camera. To set this up, it's really, really simple. Go and find some bloke running around, jumping in the training rooms. I'm not even kidding. This is so much easier than any other way to do it. And then just track him, spend time tracking him. If the reticle is moving too far off too quickly, the sensitivity is too high. If the reticle isn't keeping pace with the target, the sensitivity is too low. This is important because this is the kind of thing you use for shotguns and bolt action rifles. Like take a look at this. This is where your camera is clutch. You've got to be able to track targets while you're moving through the air. Or there's going to be a bloke come around this corner. I'm going to miss my crossbow shot. It's a hot drop. I don't have a vest or anything. He's got an automatic gun. I should be screwed. I'm going to track straight to his head. That's third person no scope right you do the same for all your scopes get a 3x just follow them around tracking them if you're moving too far off them too easily sensitivity is too high if you're not keeping up with them sensitivity is too low right very very simple then we get to like the bolt actions the big scopes now to do this i generally move all the way up the mountain and i try and track these targets gently left to right you want to be able to keep your reticle the center of the crosshairs on the target pretty comfortably the whole time Again, if it's not keeping up with it, you're in trouble. You've got to raise your sensitivity. The reason I'm struggling with this and I'm setting it all up again at the moment is I've switched to six finger claw and my sense, look, I can't move. It's really frustrating. So my sensitivities are all wrong at the moment. I had to go back and set them all up. And I thought, why not do a video? And you see, I just can't get the reticle down. It's driving me nuts all over the place. And that's because I have my sensitivities set to four finger claw and it just wasn't the same. Uh, and this is a great example of how I went back to the training grounds and completely rejiggered everything. Another thing I like to do with this is practice real world situations so that you actually get value add on top of it. Um, look at the scope. There's a window down there, just like the window I was trying to shoot through on Miramar. I want to be able to move my reticle around in tiny, minute, fine detail in those kind of spaces, like windows. So I practice moving to windows. Can I do that smoothly, fluidly? My sensitivity is fine if that's the case. Now we're going to get to the automatic weapons in just a second. Your sense, your ADS sensitivity. Now, basically, the ADS sensitivity and the camera sensitivity. ADS is when you're actually holding down the fire button. That's the sensitivity that's going on there. For scopes with sniping and such, it's camera sensitivity you really have to worry about. And sometimes I won't really shoot. I'm not really worried about shooting. It's just tracking targets. Another thing you're going to see throughout this video is that I will often use people in the training grounds as my test dummies because they are the best way to practice. All right, let's go and have a look at the ADS sensitivity. Now, exactly like I was doing tracking a guy to get my camera no scope sensitivity, we're going to do the same with people with our uh, third person ADS no scope sensitivity. We're just going to follow people around and we're going to shoot at them. And as long as we can keep the reticle close to them, even up close while they're jumping and moving and zooming and tripping about the joint, then we know we're able to do it. Again, if it's zooming all over the place past them, then the ADS sensitivity is too high. If you're not being able to keep up with them, then it's too low. And once you get them right, take a bloody photo of the things because there is nothing worse than accidentally resetting your sensitivity. Now, the important thing when you're doing your ADS sensitivity, this is the one everyone wants to know about, your 3X on an M416. There's two really important things for me. One is that I test it so it works both the red dot or the holographic and the 3X at 20 meters and 50 meters. They're the two most predominant ranges you're gonna use them at. And then as well, that you use it on a M4 that has nothing on it, like just an extended mag. Because if you can get the sensitivity right without all the bells and whistles, then when you start adding things on, it's going to be so much better. Now, again, it's the same as before. I'm not really worried about horizontal recoil here. Groups and 
tactical stocks and everything, a ganel, that kind of thing, and compensators. What I really want to work on is keeping the gun below my initial point of contact and letting it just do it while standing up, not while lying down, none of that. And you can see here doing a holographic at 50 meters as well. All I want to do is just keep the gun at about the same height. If it's dipping down too much, way under, then the sensitivity is too high. If it's rising up too much, then the sensitivity is too low. You want to be able to get it right around that midpoint. And then once you sort that out at 50, go to 20 and work on just nailing headshots at 20 meters. And that's absolutely clutch on both the hollow and the red dot and the 3X. Because you might be having a 3X, someone pops out at you up close and you have to immediately go into a spray and you want to make sure that you can actually track that, which you've already done, and hit the shot as well. Now let's talk about practicing. These are the drills that I do a lot of and specifically with sniper rifles and long range spraying practice, I'll come up here on the top of the mountain. It's If you're doing it on a flat, friendly, sterile environment down on the range, I don't believe it's the same kind of value. You want to be doing it in real world situations that you're going to come up against all the time, like on a hill in Miramar or Erangel or, you know, spraying at range while crouched against someone that's running into a zone that you know, is this is where you want to be. And I'll show you some real world applications as well. One of the things I practice a lot of is crouching and standing to fire um, or standing and crouching to fire. Those two things, depending on the weapon you've got. If you've got a sniper rifle, for instance, you want to get very good at leaning while shooting and being able to do it and let it come back and zip back. I'll give you a really good example of why this is important. There's a target over there behind a tree. I'm going to lean to draw a shot. He fires, and then I get a free shot. I miss, but that's cool. I'm going to lean to draw the shot, pull back. He fires, I get a shot. So, I, I mean, that stuff I've practiced on the range a lot. And he gets forced to heal in the blue, and then we come out here and we, we get a nice leaning shot on him again. You've got to be able to do that with sniper rifles. It's it's really key. This is another one. So this is leaning and then letting it letting the lean off, going to the middle, and then leaning the other side. You hit a different target every single time. You go... Lean right, hit a target, middle, lean left, hit a target, start again. And you do it with both full auto and single fire as well. And this will allow you to get very good at poking different sides of an object. Uh, and this is, again, incredibly important. Like if you're tap firing a Mini 14 from behind walls or at targets and you want to crouch, and you'll see you'll crouch and then you stand up. And it's it's this is the exact thing we're talking about final circle there's two blokes left i'm coming into the zone this guy's cleared my helmet he's nearly killed me twice and he's up there behind that rock and he knows how to use that m24 and we've got to lean while in the blue and those are the things you drill into yourself and into yourself and then we're coming up to the last guy and he's somewhere up here he's snaking in the grass as is there want i see a target and i'm just going to hit a lean really quick and then I leaned to the left of the tree as well. I was already on to the next part of the drill, which was lean the other side. And then you practice doing it without zooming in. Uh, this is incredibly important. Again, you've got to be able to do these peaks, quick shot peaks. And these are the kind of things where when you zoom in, you actually lose a bit of time. And being able to do that quickly and fluidly is important for your gameplay. The other thing I practice a lot is, um, quite apart from the single taps and this kind of stuff here, is I practice from crouching positions like behind walls or, you know, berm, standing up and leaning and firing. And you do it with different scopes. Do it with different scopes all the time. You do this for five, 10 minutes and like, here you go. Watch, there's a guy comes in and it's automatic. Bang. And you're out. I can't tell you five minutes a day is all it'll take you. Five minutes every day for a month and your hands will be flying around the place like an octopus. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that video was helpful. Look after yourselves. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the in the uh, section below. I would really appreciate a like. A thumbs up would be great for me. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more videos like this because I've been progressing through Six Finger Claw. I'm having some massive troubles with the moment with uh, because I've got so many fingers on the screen. The screen is jamming uh, and the recoil isn't working. I'll show you what I mean. Hang on one sec. See this guy. Watch the watch the re the gun just goes right over his head. I can't get it down because it's just jamming and I keep like I've got the peak. All I need to do is to have it go and let me control the recoil. And I can hit the guy, but when I peek, it's it's absolutely killing me. Here it goes again. 
It just... It, see, I can't drag it around. It's locking on the screen. I don't understand. Um, which means that this was like, wow, I thought I was going to die. Anyway, leave a comment below. I know some of you have experienced that before and people have suggested minor things. I'm going to try some thumb socks and see if that helps. Uh, look after your stills and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.